So this is how you properly shill. Take note, people. Uh, no, seriously, so I gotta get some stuff done today. Tomorrow, from the time we're filming this, I don't know exactly when you guys are gonna see this video. Um, Steve with Gamers Nexus and I are gonna be doing the finale of single card overclocking for the whole Rip GN, Rip J, which is funny, because he didn't really show up to the fight. He got, he got busy with like work that matters, not the superficial look, I'm faster than you at Port Royal. I guess he was ripped from the start. But anyway, I'm gonna be heading to EVGA's office. Uh, we're gonna be doing our overclocking using Kingpin cards, just like we did last time. The difference this time around is obviously with uh, everything going on. Um, he's gonna be remote live streaming in from his studio in North Carolina. Because I'm local to EVGA, I'm gonna be at their studio, um, socially distanced inside of it anyway. So I guess I'll be kind of by myself. If something goes wrong, I'm just gonna be like, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. Um, last time, Vince was there to hold our hands. Vince is also gonna be there, Kingpin, if you know who Vince is, uh, is also gonna be there via live stream from Taiwan. Yeah, so I need to prepare my system now though, because unlike, unlike last time, where they flew Steve in and I drove in, they had systems ready to go for us and we had to like draw letters to be able to pick a card because they had three cards there. There was like a good one, a medium one, and then like a dud. This time we just have what we have. We were each sent a Kingpin card. Who knows how these are gonna land, but I also have to build my own system. So we've got a secret sauce, 10900K, I guess this one's good up to like 5.7 gigahertz. Yeah, I don't know, I mean, that's what they say anyway. By they, I mean Intel, they sent it to us. But Steve has one as well, because because we know we're doing this on Intel platform, um, which all this was planned before AMD. I don't think 5900X would honestly have helped with single card. It's SLI where you can really start to bottleneck things. They sent him one as well. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna be using that one, but that's what we've got. So I've got to build the system, get the BIOS updated on this, get the our operating system installed, which this contains a very stripped down, lots of functionality turned off, yada yada version of Windows 10, which again, when every point matters, that's what we do. And I've got some secret tuning I'm gonna do, but I think I'll go ahead and take you guys along for the ride on some of the secret tunings that we do to try and get more performance out of these cards. Because like I said, by the time you guys see this video, there's no way Steve could have seen it, not to mention Steve already knows this stuff. Or at least his hair does, and I think it whispers into his ear what he's supposed to do while he's overclocking. His, his hair is just like, hey, you should probably go turn Tifa down. Steve doesn't know what he's doing. It's actually the hair. Okay, whatever. Let's go ahead and do this. <laughs> this is my first time actually using the Z490 Dark. Uh, I've used the Dark boards for other things. Oh, well, it's not on there anymore. That's right. We, we unretired it because we ended up going back to the X299 platform with the 10900XE, which is funny. We started getting amazing scores with that, and then everyone seemed to suddenly stop using the 10900K, and they started using 10980XEs. It's almost like we uncovered something there. I swear to God, this is not an EVGA ad. I promise they have, that we are not being paid. We are not. Sure, sure. Hey, first of all, you pointed at this when you're all, sure, okay. There is a good chance of killing this, okay, with condensation, bad voltage, like if I don't know what I'm doing, which people would arguably say I don't, there's a chance it could die. Second of all, I've got to cover it in Vaseline. Is that romantic? <sighs> <laughs> Shut up. The, the point being, uh, it was supplied for the competition in that it could very well die. And then when we're done with the competition, the, the condition of which we I get to keep it is not ideal in terms of being used in everyday scenarios. I think I will test the dishwasher thing though, with it being a bare, and put it, put it in the dishwasher to clear all the Vaseline off. You use the Vaseline to protect it from um, condensation and such. But anyway, so the dark board, what I started to say when I was like, this isn't an ad, I swear. I am a huge fan of EVGA's BIOS. Because Kingpin has a big hand in a lot of that, uh, Kingpin and Tin, uh, who's his like counterpart, his partner in crime there, there's a lot of simplification in things that just, hey, these make very little difference to the overall performance of some of these overclocks. So let's just not put this in here in the menu. And I'm a fan of that. Whereas Asus, don't get me wrong, Asus is also very, very capable. Um, it's usually EVGA and Asus going back and forth on who has these leaderboards. Kind of really overcomplicate a lot of the BIOS and such. So that's why I like the EVGA stuff, because it's dumbed down for an idiot like me, so I can just turn knobs. <laughs> it's been so long. I was like, what is that? It's been so long since I've seen an old school flexi SLI ribbon that I was like, what is that? <laughs> so I gotta put the little standoff thingies in here, which is fun. They're just like 
They're like regular standoffs, only they're just like, you know, the guy that's just a friend versus you kind of a thing. And I'm gonna use my iFixit to do that. And this is where I get to give you a special message from So forgive me for the shameless like read here. I, they sent me an email about uh, their holiday like promos that they got going on right now. And I don't wanna screw this up because if you guys aren't aware, the very first iFixit kit I ever got a couple of years ago was actually given to me on Father's Day by my wife. And since then, I think you guys have learned that we absolutely love our relationship with iFixit. Let's face it, we used explosions. How could anything go wrong? There's a lot of stuff happening here and I don't wanna get it wrong. So iFixit's actually giving you a price reduction for the rest of the year, all the way through uh, the end of 2020. So the RBT Ultimate iFixit kit, you can get $50 off. That's actually this guy right here. This is the one that's got like all the big tool kits and stuff in the bag and all that. Um, I sense taking a lot of it out. It's exploded because I've got iFixit kits literally. See, I've got iFixit kits in reach of wherever I'm at. That way I literally just, where's my iFixit? And be like, there it is. The classic oak toolbox is $30 off. You can get $10 off when you buy gift bundles or the ProTech Plus MM. November 21st to the 28th, so that's gonna be the Black Friday stuff. Free shipping on orders over $20, $10 off the ProTech, $10 off the Manta. And then December 13th through the 20th, free guaranteed shipping when you buy a ProTech. There's a lot of stuff going on here, so I'm putting links down below. We'll put the whole promo down there. If you are anything like me, or let's say you've got a husband or a wife that's anything like me, and they are just hard to buy for, trust me when I say a toolkit, you can never go wrong. And if you go, well, they've already got a toolkit. They don't have an eye fix it. They don't have a toolkit. I'm not even gonna call it shameless plug over. Just plug over because iFixit is amazing. And if you've never used iFixit, then you just are missing out. But I've got to go ahead and get all these little standoffs off or on. So rather than bore you with this, we'll just, we'll just use the fast forward button. <laughs> also too, you might've noticed I'm wearing some new Jay's Two Cents merch. Got our new logo. It's got a back print. And if you guys want to learn more about it, there's actually a link down below for the, uh, this is a very limited drop. Like it's a limited drop. Anyway, there's a link down below. You guys can sign up to learn more about like when the drop starts. If you guys want one, you can get one. If not, perfectly fine too. Remember, go buy an iFixit kit though. That's more important. So this now looks like the most Shoot. EVGA <laughs> branded video I think I've ever done. But again, it's, it's EVGA's competitions. I was watching a uh, Vice Group Garage last night. He's like, why is everything creaking? This car is creakier than Bob Barker's back. Oh my God. Who's <laughs> the, yeah. They're reproducing now. <laughs> Don't stab the board. Stop doing that. That'll make Steve happy. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's still above the pump, like yeah, way above the pump. This is a problem. <laughs> this ram has been through hell and back and still survives. And it's the same ram that we still currently hold second place on SLI. This Trident Z will not quit. It's 3866 megahertz, which doesn't sound like a lot considering we have 5100 dims over there. But the thing is, I don't know what it is with these particular modules. They will overvolt and overclock like crazy. More importantly, the timing. We can get such tight timings on these that that is where so much of our score was picked up and improved. And that overclocking video where I was like, we're gonna do some secret stuff and I'm not gonna share with you, was literally the timing tuning. That's not news. Anyone that does overclocking and understands Port Royal and, and the way that these benchmarks run, that's not news, but it is news to the masses, I'm sure. Let's talk about uh, RAM timings here for a second, because I know people get caught up on the whole megahertz thing. The megahertz should only be looked at as your bandwidth, but the timings are more important because that controls your milliseconds in delay. Did I say milliseconds? Yeah, you did. Oh yeah, nanoseconds. But believe it or not, nanoseconds are everything when it comes to compute. So let's do the math here. If you wanna know which RAM is faster, and the reason why you show these timings, I feel like we need to do a dedicated video on this, by the way. I've put off talking about timing for a long time because I don't want to confuse people, but I think at the end of the day, this is what people need to understand. You might have RAM, like let's, let's, let's calculate the latency of this RAM. So the first thing you do is you take the CL number, which in this case is CL18. 
Sounds kind of slow, right? So you take 18 times 2,000. 2,000 is the multiplier that you use for that. And then you divide that by the frequency. So if we divide that by 3,866, that's 9.311 nanoseconds is the latency that you can basically just use that as a calculation factor at that point. So 9.311. 9 that's our speed of this RAM. Now, if we bump up, leave CL18 where it's at, we bump it up to, let's say, 4,000. Now, this RAM will go up to about 4,200, but the timings then have to loosen because the faster you bump up your RAM, the more uh, sensitive timings become in that they will start to introduce memory errors. Won't always crash, but you'll get memory errors causing really weird things. So 4,000, let's do that again. So 18 times 2,000 divided by 4,000. So now it's just nines. You can see we just chopped 0.311 nanoseconds, which really doesn't seem like anything, but trust me, that matters. However, what I'm able to do with this RAM is I can leave it at 4,000. I can go from 3866 to 4,000, but I can get the CL number all the way down to 12 with these. So if I do 12 times 2,000 divided by 4,000, six nanoseconds is what I'm able to get in terms of latency with this RAM. So these crucial ballistics right here, these are the like fastest modules in the world. These are 5,100 megahertz CL19 DIMMs. You might be asking yourself why we're not using it, but I'm gonna show you right here how the math would compare. So this is 19 times 2,000 divided by 5,100. That's 7.45 out of the box if you can run the XMP. The problem is, and I still have to get on the phone with them, they, they said they helped me tune it. I have not been able to get anywhere near these speeds on my system because you can't just, with these kinds of numbers, you can't just turn on XMP and have them go. There's tuning you have to do to the internal memory controller on the CPU. And that's gonna be, um, well, there's cache tuning you've got to do on there. There's obviously gonna be um, other voltages that you have to control from the memory controller to get anywhere near that. And I'm just sort of shooting in the dark. I don't know where I'm aiming on any of that stuff. So it did say they would help me get these RAM uh, modules up and running, but I already know what I'm able to do with these. And like I just showed you, we got down to six nanoseconds. Um, I wanna try these out later, but I know this works and I don't have time to screw with this right now. I've gotta get the comp this stuff up and running in a way that I know it, that I can use it. So just a little quick lesson there regarding RAM timings. The difference between that RAM and this RAM though is that RAM out of the box XMP is 1.5 volts, which is a lot higher than the 1.3 you typically see. But again, 5,100 megahertz, that's a, that's a very fast speed that requires a lot of voltage to do it. I use 1.8 <laughs> on these. Let's just say I'm bringing all four, even though I can only use two, because every time I plug these in and apply those types of voltages, I firmly expect them to die. So this, it's the Kingpin card. And yes, there's some dents and stuff in the radiator. This is not brand spanking new. This has been, you know, this is like an early sample kind of a deal. We're gonna play with it like this, with this cooler, just to kind of see what it does. I'm just curious as to how this compares to our custom BIOS for the Win 3 that we have. And then we're obviously gonna have to take the cooler and stuff off of this to prepare for tomorrow's LN2, because although this is impressive, this is what's going on it. This guy right here. Yeah, yeah, to do the lifting of the overclocking. Let's go. Jeez. <laughs> One of the things that makes this different than other cards is the fact that this card has basically uh, provisions on here to remove all the fail safes, all the voltage limitations, the power limitations. You could literally burn this card to the ground if you turn off all those safeguards and uh, do that. Don't do that though. <laughs> No idea what this card costs. I'm a little worried. I don't even like the idea of abusing it like I do with these L this LN2 stuff because I do like collecting Kingpin cards. I've got one of every generation from the 700 series and up. Just now I'm actually using them for what they're meant for. Now I know this is the part where people are gonna be like, Jay, why are you using a SATA drive? Just use M.2. This is the secret. And I'm not letting you guys in on this. Well, I am, I guess. The secret is in Kingpin's patented overclock SATA cables. So you wanna use SATA when you're doing these types of overclocks because the extra bandwidth you get makes this faster than any RAID M.2. You'd be surprised how much setup takes place in the OS to get maximum scores as well. We've showed this a million times. So on, uh, on NVIDIA, if you go into 3D settings and then you come down to performance or to power management mode, prefer maximum performance is what you want. It's gonna be on optimum pow optimal power by default. And then you can come down here to um, 
texture filtering quality, that'll be on high, or on quality by default, put that on high performance. You hit apply on those and then come over here and then do use my preferences em emphasizing performance. Make sure Defender is off, no antivirus running, no updates automatic, none of that stuff. So one of the first things I like to do actually is just load up the card, max out the fans, because remember, we're not gonna be using the fans on this. Um, it's gonna be LN2 cool. And what I like to see is what is our voltage doing? Look, 1093 millivolts. That's already higher voltage than we ever had on our Further Wind 3 card. So what I wanna do right now is I wanna see where it will crash at these temperatures. Because remember, one of the things that we've learned with these overclocking competitions is stability and core clock scale with temperature. You can get way more core clock out of a much colder core with the stock voltage than you can uh, with higher temperatures. So right now where we may crash at 45, we won't crash at 20. And that was something we learned with the ice bucket stuff. So I'm, in, I'm really excited to see how this does under full load with LN2 with voltage control, which is something I have not had with the other card. Let's go 125, let's just go for it. Oh, crashed. I wouldn't expect this card right now out of the box with this water cooler to match our custom for the Win 3 BIOS cards with ice water. So our previous score was a 15,652, which took ice bucket and custom this and that and custom making blocks and overclocking of CPUs and all that. Where did we land on our first run without doing anything really? 14,990. Okay, not bad because I don't think we even pushed this clock as, as far as we could. Anyway, this is the crap we go through. If you want to see how it turns out for me, then go check out EVGA's live stream invitational overclocking where Steve and I go head to head and we'll see whether or not this crap ended up making me a stud or a dud. Also go check out iFixit's um, Thanksgiving and Christmas sales.